I'm assuming this isn't the first YouTube video I've clicked on today, and it won't be the last. You're going to keep searching up how to overcome your fear of confrontation until you have a plan set forth, you have all the steps you need, and then you're going to go out tomorrow and not do anything about it. If you don't know who I am, my name is Greg, and I'm going to teach you how to overcome your fear of confrontation. Now, from the outside looking in, it might not seem like I'm the type of person that fears confrontation from the get-go. But I'm going to tell you a story from my childhood that kind of just sums it all up for you. When I was growing up, I was a very shy kid. I would always sit in the corner whenever there was a birthday party. Whenever at the birthday party they told all the kids to dance in the circle, I was always, you know, hugging my mom's leg, trying to stay away from it all. I was incredibly shy. And as a kid, I sort of got by through life with my parents covering for me whenever I had a very shy moment or didn't want to talk to anyone. But this started becoming a problem as I got a little older. See, when I was in fifth grade is when I started to get bullied at school. There were other kids in the class that would pick on me, call me names and whatever. Sometimes the teachers could hear it, other times they couldn't. And this would honestly make me super upset. Now, in my head, I felt like as long as I didn't show that I was upset, they would stop the bullying. They would stop the name calling. They would stop throwing things at me. But that's not how it worked. See, the bully could tell that I was shy and that I wasn't going to speak up for myself. And they went along doing what they were always going to do. Now, my fear of confrontation led me to believe that if I spoke up for myself, something bad would happen. I didn't know what, but something bad. I was afraid to stand up for myself even though I was in the right, even though I would have been in the right by, you know, telling a teacher or telling the principal or whatever. But what ended up happening is every, almost every single day in fifth grade, I went home super upset, almost on the verge of tears because these kids would not stop picking on me. So thankfully, I had my mom to stand up for me, and I was really kind of embarrassed when she went to the school to go talk to the teacher about the bullying problem I was having. But it felt kind of good finally having someone to stand up for me and, you know, stop this problem that I was having. This all stemmed from my fear of confrontation. Here's the thing, though. If you're watching this video, you're probably not in fifth grade anymore. There's a good chance that in day-to-day -day interactions, you face situations where it would probably be ideal if you confronted a person, or it would probably be ideal if you were less afraid of a confrontation, but you kind of just shy away, keep your mouth shut, and try to keep the peace. As a matter of fact, keeping the peace is exactly the reason why your brain fears confrontation. Because in your head, as long as you don't talk back or stand up for yourself or anything, that'll keep the peace in that moment. Because it's such an anxious thought for you to think of disrupting that pattern of the people, you know, bullying you or calling you names or just having a bad experience at work, school, whatever, no matter what it is, as long as you keep your mouth shut, you can keep going along as things were before. But there's a problem with that. See, sometimes people will stand up for you and just say, oh, no, he's shy. Yeah, she's just a little bit quiet. But that's not always going to be the case for you. This is something you have to realize as you start growing older, that people are not always going to feel bad for you like they feel bad for a 10-year-old. And eventually, and this eventually probably has already happened for you, you need to stand up for yourself. Now, these are some actual tips and actionable steps on exactly the things I did to start getting over my shyness and fear of confrontation. As I was getting into high school, I was getting more comfortable with my friend group, but I was still very shy about, you know, being embarrassed or picked on or even doing major life steps like asking someone out. What all of these things require you to do is to overcome some sort of fear. What I started doing in around 11th grade in high school was volunteering for public speaking. Whenever there was any sort of group project or group presentation, I would volunteer to go first. 
Now, by doing this, I had inadvertently gotten myself better at public speaking because in high school, I felt like there was a lot less pressure to talk to a group of people than a single person one on one, as long as I knew what I was talking about. And thankfully, since I was in school, I was allowed to be a little bit more jokey with how I spoke publicly. This is how I started getting over my fear. And I think by doing this, whether it's at work or at school or any sort of social situation you have, whether it's like making a toast at dinner or saying a prayer out loud, doing these things will help you get over your fear of speaking in a group setting, which is usually where confrontation occurs to begin with. The second thing I started doing was simply putting myself in more group situations. Early in high school, I was a degenerate gamer. I would avoid hanging out with my friend group and playing sports to just stay inside and play video games. You can't expect yourself to be better at a social skill like defeating your fear of confrontation if you're not in social situations. Now, this applies to school, work, or any, sing any so single situation where you're outside of your home. As simple as it sounds, if you're afraid of talking to people, Simply just be at home less, if you can. The next thing that I did that really, genuinely got me over my fear of confrontation was something that I can't really say everyone can do, but you can do a certain version of it. And here's what I did. I started working in sales. Now, working in sales is essentially just talking and convincing people to do something. One of the places where I had the best experiences for this, although probably some of the most stressful experiences in my life, was when I worked at a pharmacy. So that means I saw something crazy pretty much every single day, and I worked as a cashier. So I would have customers coming up to me and berating me. And the best thing that I could do in that situation wasn't to call my manager to come save me. I would level with them and talk to them in a clear tone of voice without showing any sort of fear. This is probably the best thing that you can do if you're in a high pressure situation. Start talking more slowly. Don't rush your movements. I learned this technique from a old coworker of mine who I still appreciate to this day. If you feel yourself getting more nervous, simply talk more slowly. In these situations where there's high pressure and you feel very afraid of the person that you're talking to, talking more slowly, even though your heart is racing, is going to kind of put your mind at ease a little bit to the point where you can actually focus on what you're saying to the person and have your point come across clearly, because that's all you need to do. And the last thing I would recommend, which kind of ties into what I was saying before, is to have more novel social experiences. So this means more new social experiences that are outside of your norm. If your norm is to go to your gym and lift weights for an hour and a half, not talk to anyone and go home, say hi to the person at the front desk. Say what's up to the guy in the locker room who's posing and say, dude, you're looking shredded. Even if he's not, just say, dude, you're looking shredded. And people will appreciate that. Doing little things like that not only make other people happy because you're like complimenting them, it also makes you happy because you went out of your way to say something to someone else. This concept I like to call warming up your social battery or your social engine, where you make little interactions throughout the day so that any major interaction feels a lot smoother. Let's say I have a class at 3 o'clock. And there's a classmate that I have that I want to go out on a date with. I've been stressing all week. Dude, what do I say to her? I'm texting my friends. Dude, what's the best pickup lines for me to say to her to go, to go on this date? If you simply just say hi to people along the way throughout your day, say what's up to the guy at the coffee shop, say hi to the security guard at your school, whatever it is, by the time 3 o'clock hits, by the time three o'clock hits, the class is over, and you want to muster up the courage to talk to that person, your social battery will have already been warmed up. However, 
if you talk to no one throughout that entire day and stress yourself out over what what um what's the perfect uh, most optimal combination of words I can say so she she'll go out on a date with me. See how different those two things are. I know I've gone out on a little bit of a tangent now, but my main idea when it comes to overcoming your fear of confrontation, which I'm still working towards to this day, is you are the only person that can advocate for yourself. Of course, it's great to have a group of friends or family who can stand up for you when you're at your weakest, but you can't be at your weakest all the time. There are going to be times when you're on your own and you're going to have to put your foot down and say, hey, I'm not doing that. Or, hey, we need to get this done. And there have been plenty of situations. You can already probably think of plenty of situations where you wished you said something. Now, you can't change those things that you wish you said something in the past, but there's going to be a million more of them tomorrow in the future. So take the actionable steps that I've mentioned today and implement them in your interactions tomorrow. I want to know what kind of situations you find yourself in where you struggle to face that sort of confrontation. So leave a comment down below and I'll see if I have any specific tips for what you're dealing with. If you don't know me already, my name is Greg, and I have not posted a YouTube video in months. So if you'd like, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and let me know what sort of video you want to see next. I already have a couple of video ideas planned for the future. I'm going to be on a call with my mentor, and I'm excited to show you guys what that's going to look like. I hope this video helped you out, and share it with a friend who needs it. See ya.